Tonight, Fox 4 Investigates reveals the findings of a major seven-month investigation. In the wake of Hurricane Ian's destruction. Should we have taken it more seriously, of course, but they should have relayed it to us a lot sooner and more desperation, like, hey, guys, leave. Some storm survivors say they're now angry at Lee County leaders' lack of urgency to evacuate. If you're feeling unsafe, it's okay to go now until it was too late. The evacuation this morning is a mandatory evacuation order. The evacuation was called for on time, it was really very good. Tonight, Lee County's manager tells Fox 4 Investigates why leaders did not follow their own evacuation plan. What's the point of having a plan if it's laid out in black and white, but then we don't adhere to it? That's a base document, that's where we start. Now asking if county leaders have changed how they will respond to the next storm. Variables you never thought about. And National Hurricane Center experts weigh in on the evacuation's timing. In hindsight, could you have done it a day earlier? Of course. I have thought about this endlessly. And a Lee County Commissioner admits changes have to be made before the next storm. We will have perfection this time, and last time wasn't perfection. Every storm we have to do a little better. Tonight, Fox 4 Investigates pushes for accountability and solutions, examining every aspect of the evacuation. We are now just days away from the 2023 hurricane season, and Fox 4 Investigates wanted to see how the lessons learned after Hurricane Ian are now shaping future evacuation policies here in Southwest Florida. That is why you're about to see the result of a seven month long investigation here at Fox 4 that we are calling the evacuation. Now, Fox 4 Investigates used a series of records requests to reconstruct Lee County leaders decision making process as the near category five storm approached Southwest Florida. Now in our findings, documents show Lee County leaders did not follow their own emergency management plan, which created delays and delays that prevented people, including those living on Fort Myers Beach, from being able to make the most informed evacuation decision, they say. All in one day, some of these survivors lost their homes, jobs, livelihoods, hoods and friends telling me as the storm's shock now wears off their anger builds saying Lee County leaders less urgent tone compared to past storms like Irma made the decision to stay or go that much more difficult until it was too late. Probably made a very bad decision to stay. September 28th, 812 AM. Mitch Pacina began documenting his day as Hurricane Ian flirted with Southwest Florida's coast, already anxious. Okay, so we're just coming in, coming down the street already. As the storm surge, slow like salty lava, seeped onto his street. All right, let's hope for the best. Mitch's last video posted at 12.23 p.m. This ain't letting up yet. It gets a little higher. May have to go on the roof. One hour later, his last post reading, OK, we're terrified. Mitch and uh, Damon were my two best friends on the beach. Two best friends Mike Yost lost that day, including Mitch. I cut through and went to Mitch's house, and the only thing standing there was the, uh, the pilings. And Damon Utterback, also known as the pirate of Fort Myers Beach. I got over there, and he was hanging out of his window and he didn't make it. State medical examiner's records showing 72 of the 149 lives lost during Ian were from Lee County and about half drowned. The sadness was a while ago. The sadness for Yost now shifting, wanting a call for accountability. Now it's more like annoyance and anger at, at the situation, yeah. Both on the representative's faults and our, our own faults. Should we have taken it more seriously, of course, but they should have relayed it to us a lot sooner and a lot in more desperation, like, hey, guys, leave. Based on the forecast overnight. Leading up to and after Ian. The higher the pressure goes, the more leaks we find. It was mostly Lee County Manager Roger Desjardins leading news conferences, including two days before Ian hit. This is what he told residents on Barrier Islands that Monday. If you're feeling unsafe, if you're feeling a little nervous about um, about this storm and the effects, it's okay to go now. It was not until the next morning. As mandatory as can be. We Tuesday be at 7 a.m., his tone changed. Leave, but we are stressing, 
the importance of people uh, getting out of harm's way based on the surge models. As the first evacuation order was issued, only 32 hours before Hurricane Ian made landfall at 3.05 p.m. on Cayo Costa, 23 miles northwest of Fort Myers Beach. That morning, it's like, okay, now it's coming. And it's Yo saying later, this muted messaging on Monday. Whatever. If you're feeling unsafe. Didn't seem to be that sense of urgency. Nowhere near how he remembers past hurricanes, including Irma in 2017. During Irma, they had buses coming and getting people too. And there was none of that. This time, it was really like the day before. They're like, get out now. Get out now. This is serious. And we're like, we don't have a car. I live on an island. I have a bike. You know, uh, we have two animals. You know, uh, it's really hard to just go, all right, three hours, let's get out of here. That timing in question, because the National Weather Service's first tropical storm watch went out to the public at 11 p.m. Sunday night. At the same time, the National Hurricane Center's storm surge models, also a public document, shows as early as 11 p.m. Sunday, there was already a 50 to 69 percent chance Lee County's coast would see more than four feet of storm surge. So according to Lee County's own comprehensive plan, the formula is simple. Seen here, it shows with this information, as early as Sunday night, leaders should have ordered Coastal Zone A, including Fort Myers Beach, to be evacuated. So for a storm surge watch, we put those out about 48 hours before we expect the conditions to really deteriorate. National Hurricane Center meteorologist Robbie Berg is a senior hurricane specialist. And it's to say that there is a possibility of life-threatening inundation from storm surge along the coast, even potentially penetrating inland. That's a significant message that we're trying to put out. The evacuation decision fell on County Manager Roger Desjarlais. His signature seen here on the evacuation order Tuesday morning as an appointed designee. And the charter says why. If the board cannot physically meet, the decision can be made by several people, starting with the board chairman. If he's absent, then vice chair, other board members, or appoint a designee. Board Chairman Cecil Pendergrass was already booked on a Friday night flight to Germany for a tourism conference. To monitor Tropical Storm Ian. That's that the same day Governor Ron DeSantis announced a state of emergency that Friday, September 23rd. Commissioner Pendergrass in a statement telling Fox 4, quote, he was in constant communications with staff via phone call, email, and Zoom. He went on to say, while under the state of local emergency, the county manager is the acting authority on emergency decisions. Uh, some operational decisions that have been made. At a 3 p.m. Monday news conference, 16 hours after that first storm watch was already out, there was still no evacuation. I'm sure there will be questions about evacuations and sheltering, uh, but those decisions have not yet been made, although we are fully prepared to take actions. By 7 p.m. Monday, still no evacuation, though one had been drafted. The evacuation this morning is a mandatory evacuation order. The county says this gave people in Zone A and parts of Zone B 32 hours to evacuate. Ordering evacuation for all of Zone A and all of Zone B. And there was even less time to evacuate when all of Zone B was added at 9 a.m. Tuesday. For the third time today, we are now adding parts of uh, evacuations, uh, evacuation Zone C. And by the time all of the evacuation orders were in place, at 2 o'clock Tuesday afternoon, there was only nine hours left before Southwest Florida felt the first tropical storm force winds reaching 40 miles per hour by 11 p.m. Tuesday night. And it was 8 a.m. Wednesday when Ian was at its strongest, measuring as a Category 5 in the Gulf. Never seen a river on our street. Mitch Pacina's own video showing that storm surge around the same time, less than 15 hours after all evacuation orders were put in place. At this time, Fox 4 was getting reports of people trapped in their homes while live capturing people trying to evacuate on the Sanibel Causeway. You could just see how slow you know, a car is going at this time. This evacuation's timing contradicting the county's own emergency plan. That cites a 2010 study saying Lee County needs more than 20 hours to safely evacuate zone A, B, and C. And by the time the 32 hour mark was reached between when the county issued the first evacuation order, mandatory evacuation order, to an Ian's Eye main landfall, it was 3 p.m. Wednesday. Half of the hurricane was already on shore. We desperately wish that there had been no fatalities. 
Um, and we will, of course, tweak our messaging, but we had a plan. We had a plan for multiple scenarios, and the plan worked. County Manager Roger Desjardins told me he still stands by every evacuation call. It will be Zone A. I'm comfortable with the uh, decisions that were made and the timing. Despite these decisions did not follow the county's own plan. You said that it wasn't like a simple science, but I have a copy of your comprehensive plan here. And it seems like it's a pretty simple chart. It says once we get the storm surge at 40 percent, four feet or higher, we call zone A. By Sunday night at 11, we had more than 40 percent. So what's the point of having a plan if it's laid out in black and white, but then we don't adhere to it? All of those uh, studies that you see and uh, charts that you see uh, calling for um, evacuation times, that's a place to start. That's not the final decision point. To try and explain the complexities in a plan um, would be, it would be an enormous document. Remember, we, we consider the totality of all of the data that we have as the storm evolves and it's constantly changing. And you said uh, the 32 hours before it made landfalls when the evacuation was first put in place, but it was about 15 hours before we felt Ian, as we know, that storm surge came in the morning before landfall at three o'clock. You know, I'm, I'm not, I, the message was still correct and the time was still correct. In the days after the storm, both county leaders. The cone, 72 hours before the storm, we still were not in the cone. Um, Lee County wasn't. And even Governor Ron DeSantis have been unwavering in using the storm's shifting cone to defend the decision's timing. 48 hours they were on the periphery, uh, so you got to make the decisions the best you can. But both National Weather Service and National Hurricane Center experts warn we should not rely on the cone alone. The cone is just where the center of the storm might move. It says nothing about the winds of the storm. It says nothing about the storm surge. National Weather Service warning coordination meteorologist Daniel Noah going one step further in evaluating Even Lee County's evacuation. In hindsight, could you have done it a day earlier? Of course. We did that up in Tampa. I know that those experts have said, but they weren't here. And it's, you know, they have a job to do and they are admittedly very conservative. On the other hand, you know, our job is to make the best decisions possible for the people in Lee County, people who live here and our visitors. And we made the right decision. The, the evacuation was called for on time. It was, the timing was, was really very good. I have thought about this endlessly. Commissioner I, Kevin Ruane also spoke to me seat. about the evacuation after a Resilient Lee Task Force meeting. It's going to take some time. Where county leaders yeah. are not only looking forward to long-term rebuilding, enough. but looking back at lessons learned after Ian, which Ruane says includes making sure there is more effective communication with the school district and sheriff's office leaders to make sure shelters are ready the moment an evacuation is called. And now I have a timeline associated with what time do I need to have the shelter ready. And what I've learned is I need 12 solid hours at the very least, depending on the number of people I prepare for. So I need a day. Ruane says his goal as task force leader is to be better this hurricane season. I'm very comfortable with the decision we made. We'll have perfection this time and last time wasn't perfection. But I don't think it was nearly as bad as people said it was. Can we do it better? Of course. Anything top of mind that you're like, okay, we got to make it better this time around? We're always compelled to take a look at, at everything that happened, the entire timeline, all the decisions made to work on uh, getting better for the next time. Dijarlay says the county is now drafting an after Ian action report, admitting they are working on their messaging and helping the public understand context. For example, if there's a uh, if there's a prediction of another storm surge, there are lots of there's lots of graphic material available today that wasn't available to really demonstrate locally what what that looks like and and you know we'll be using that. But back on Fort Myers Beach, it just didn't seem that urgent for these survivors. They've heard this type of message before, even from county leaders since the days after Ian. They didn't leave. I respect their choices, but I'm sure a lot of them will regret it now. Just the backlash of people saying, well, you're the idiot that stayed. Those lessons they feel 
you can't leave now. Just come, you know, just hold on. Coming a little too late. Do you feel like if that urgency was there, more people would be alive? Yes. I don't think Mitch and Mary would have stayed if, if they had thought it was going to get up to their... Oh, my God. It was almost like... Wrong decision. Kind of just left it up, up to us. It's okay to go now. And not, hey, this is some serious you-know-what. Now hoping for solutions... I don't recognize much. ...ahead of the next storm. Not just for the survivors who lost their homes and businesses on our coast. There's a pirate thing over here. But for the 149 lives lost during Ian, including Mike's friends, Mitch and Damon. Prayers sent for all lost souls. You will never be forgotten. That's true. Think about them every day. Now, despite Commissioner Wayne saying coordination between the county and the school district can be improved in the future, County Manager Desjardins disagrees. He says the school district worked closely with county leaders in the Emergency Operations Center during the storm to have shelters open when needed. Now, the Lee County School District spokesperson responded back with a statement saying the district was prepared to open shelters by Sunday, September 25th, but the district was told they were not needed on Monday. If you want to see the district's full statement and to see more of our documentation in this seven month long investigation, it continues when you click on this QR code there. You can also watch my extended interviews with these county leaders and hurricane survivors that is live right now on Fox4Now.com. You just want to click on the investigations and the evacuation for this Fox 4 investigation. I'm Nadine Giannis.